going on everyone john matrix here hope you're having yourselves a wonderful day evening afternoon whatever whenever time you're watching it uh today we're going to be jumping back into the scp universe this has been a requested video by some people in the community for me to take a look at uh explain the scp mobile task forces by mr illustrated so we're going to learn about what the various mobile task force are in the scp universe um yeah i guess the as far as i know from various videos we've already had there's different mobile task force groups that are employed either directly by the scp foundation um whether they work for them or they're subcontracted by them etc i don't know but i guess we'll find out hopefully in this video but they go out and they do different things help uh, contain um you know various anomalies etc etc so we're gonna learn about them so again this is explain the uh, scp mobile task forces by mr illustrated links will be down below in the description uh to the original channel without my commentary and reaction and to mr illustrated channel so if you'll do me a favor please click those links check out the original video give it a like if you enjoy it uh check out mr illustrated's channel he's got a lot of great content for the scp universe check out his stuff give him a sub if you'd like to man deserves, man deserves the support all right volume's good and let's go Mobile task forces are elite units comprised of personnel drawn from across the foundation and are mobilized to deal with specific threats or situations that sometimes exceed the operational capacity or expertise of regular field personnel and, as their name suggests, may be relocated between facilities or locations as they are needed. Mobile task force personnel represent the best of the best of right. the foundation. And then even among those, there's like different levels of task force. There's, uh, I think it's called Omega something or other. Maybe, I, maybe I'm misremembering the name or whatever, but they're kind of like the SEAL Team 6 of task force where like when shit really hits the fan, they're the ones that get sent in. Mobile task forces vary greatly in size, composition, and purpose. A battalion strength combat orientated task force trained to deal with highly aggressive anomalous entities may consist of hundreds of troops plus support personnel, vehicles, and equipment, and can be deployed in whole or in part to deal with threats across the globe. However, a mobile task force can also be a small specialized intelligence gathering or investigative task force Makes that may sense. have fewer than a dozen personnel if that is deemed sufficient to accomplish their goals. While in the field, task force members often pose as emergency responders, local or federal law enforcement, or military personnel appropriate to the region in which they are operating. Mobile task force commanders can also request the assistance of local field units or personnel stationed at nearby foundation facilities in order to accomplish their missions. Each unit is fundamentally structured in a way that best suits their intended purpose. While combat oriented task force may closely follow military hierarchy and organization, smaller units may have an informal or otherwise esoteric chain of command. Gotcha. As such, the responsibilities of the mobile task force commander for each particular task force can vary greatly. The commander for a large task force might focus on maintaining multiple teams and deploying them as necessary to each assigned operation, whereas the commander of a small team might deploy with their team and direct the operation from on location. Okay, so some commanders actually might go out in the field with their team and actually engage in what needs to be done, whereas other commanders uh, might deal more uh, with mul multiple task force. So they kind of stay back at HQ and guide things from a logistical standpoint um, and have other people like in the field actually carry out the, the orders instead of them themselves going there and dealing with it in person. Makes sense. I mean, I feel like that's kind of like how normal military actions happen. You know, sometimes uh, commanders may actually have to go in the field to join in on whatever missions they have to do. Or sometimes they got to sit back and uh, see the bigger picture because they have multiple teams doing multiple things and they need to guide and be informed uh, accordingly. Similarly, the cohesion of each unit will vary as well. Some mobile task forces consist of personnel who have trained and worked for many years or even decades together. Whereas the personnel of a mobile task force formed on a moment's notice to deal with a specific incident may know little more than each other's names and field of expertise. Interesting. Mobile task forces are typically commissioned as deemed necessary. You know, obviously, yeah, you would think that, like, most teams you would want them to... In most situations, you would want teams that are familiar with each other, right? 
they they know how to work together they know how to anticipate each other and you as a leader then also understand kind of their group uh cohesion you understand how they work together as a group and what their uh strengths and weaknesses are together as a group and you know because you if you if you've got a, a, an anomalous situation and you throw people together that have never worked together you don't know what kind of unknown issues could come up between them whether or not they uh are able to work together in certain scenarios uh etc cetera, etc cetera. there's you know a lot more unknown variables i could throw in there on top of you know them going into a highly unknown variable situation dealing with what kind of anomalies etc so uh part of my fan of these are the nicknames necessary by the foundations mobile task forces are typically commissioned as deemed necessary by the foundation's director of task forces often with the direct approval of one or more o5 council members a significant number of mobile task forces are created to deal with specific anomalies exhibiting traits that standard containment or response teams are unable to effectively counteract, though many were also created to preempt an emerging or theoretical threat. Mobile task forces created for the purpose of containing a particular anomaly are typically deactivated at the end of the recovery operation or when ongoing containment is deemed no longer necessary. Occasionally, such task forces remain operational if the expertise and experiences learned are considered useful for future incidents. But otherwise, the task force will likely be disbanded and its personnel return to their prior posts. Very rarely, a mobile task force will also be disbanded if it suffers sufficient casualties right. to render it incapable of operation. In these cases, if the prior capability of that particular task force is deemed necessary, a new task force may be commissioned to replace it. Now, I would also assume that some of these task forces might even have um, humans or humanoids that are friendly to the SCP Foundation, but they are themselves SCPs or have anomalies, but their abilities allow them to help enhance the task force's capabilities in the field or otherwise, or they might have a special ability specifically to help nullify something that's going on in an area that they're being deployed to. I assume that's the case. You know, it only kind of makes sense, but I don't know for sure. Um, uh, this is the elite we're thinking of, Tile 5. It's from Site 17 video, I think. Gotcha. The mobile yeah. task forces. MTF Alpha 1, red right hand. Mobile Task Force Alpha-1 is a task force that reports directly to the O5 Council and is used in situations that require the strictest operational security. The task force consists of the Foundation's best and most loyal operatives. Further information regarding MTF Alpha-1 is classified Level 5. MTF Alpha-4 Pony Express Mobile Task Force Alpha 4 consists primarily of personnel trained to act as undercover employees and specialize in tracking, intercepting, and securing anomalous objects sent through postal and package hmm. delivery services worldwide. So I assume that these guys would uh, be kind of specialized to keep an eye on um, MC and D and, you know, maybe stuff that's going on with like Wondertainment, some of those kind of factions. I also kind of like that. Um, they show like the I guess the SCPs that they've worked in or assisted in containment of. So if you wanted to, you could go through and look up that SCP and see what this task force has done. I like that. The action reports being blank is interesting. One of us just because of like redacted stuff. Spying on Bezos, yeah, they're spying on Elon and Bezos, keeping Amazon under control. MTF Alpha Nine, Last Hope, the Reborn Omega Seven. A mobile task force explicitly intended to train yeah. and utilize humanoid SCP objects in the field. So I guess this would be one that like um, Abel would have been a part of, right? You know what I mean? Because the from that uh, the Cain and Abel SCP, Abel was one that if you know it, he respected, uh, I guess, strength that you showed that uh, you were strong unit or individual. He would respect you and work with you so they could uh, occasionally bring him out in the field so i would assume alpha 9 would be like the task force that potentially would be worked with uh doesn't say what assisted in containment of 
Deeds of an idea, deals with the devil, wolves of the door, harm's way, operation camp, uh, Granada, no joke, getting in, uh, in, into trouble. Interesting. MTF Beta 4, Castaways. Uh -huh. MTF Beta 4 is a task force created with the sole purpose of assisting and monitoring Group of Interest 466, Wilson's Wildlife Solutions, in hmm. their interactions with local fauna-based anomalies. MTF Beta 7, Maz Hatters. Mobile Task Force Beta 7 specializes in the acquisition and containment of anomalies exhibiting extreme biological, chemical, or radiological hazards, as well as the rapid containment and cleanup of areas affected by such anomalies. This includes the planning and deployment of contingencies for wide area or pandemic spread of anomalous disease agents or other contagious phenomena. You know, as they said that when they're talking about, you know, biological, chemical, and radiological hazards, for whatever reason, the, the story of like Chernobyl popped in my head and it made me wonder if anyone's done any kind of SCP story based around Chernobyl and that it was actually some kind of SCP anomaly that caused the meltdown, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That would be interesting to, to read and get into or, or listen to if that's the case. Anyway. MTF Gamma 5, Red Herrings. Mobile Task Force Gamma 5 specializes in preventing the dissemination of knowledge of anomalous events or phenomena in cases where initial suppression effects have proven ineffective or insufficient, or in cases where such knowledge has already reached critical levels of public exposure. This includes the research and deployment of experimental amnestics, <laughs> as well as memory fabrication procedures. MTF Gamma 6, Deep Feeders. Mobile Task Force Gamma-6 specializes ah. in the investigation and tracking of deep sea or oceanic anomalies. I would not want to work on that team. I don't necessarily have, like, a fear of the ocean, but I just don't like the idea of going in the ocean, the idea of being in a submarine and stuff like that, and, and just working in the ocean and under the ocean, you know, having... having sight lines, you know... Uh, curtailed so you know it's you, you don't have quite the full vision and it being dark and just the idea of being underwater and scuba gear and I'm good I'm good I just I don't like the idea of being underwater and I don't like the idea of being in like a submarine kind of a vessel you know what I mean like that's just nah MTF Gamma 13 Asimov's Lawbringers Mobile Task Force Gamma 13 specializes in the investigation tracking and apprehension of anomalous objects, persons, and entities associated with Group mm. of Interest 1115 Anderson Robotics. This includes identification of Anderson customers, location of Anderson products, and conduction of raids on Anderson offices. So I haven't gotten into, I guess, this faction yet, this, this Anderson uh, Robotics stuff. I wonder if they somehow... Uh, are tied to anything to do with, you know, Meccan or the, the Church of the Broken God or anything like that. Um, dealing with robotics. Maybe it's just, you know, a separate thing, and I, I try to, like, tie things together, but interesting. Tied with the, these SCPs, uh, the Elusive Anderson, uh, Ostringers, the Blackbird and the Falcon, Assault on Site 64. Okay. MTF Delta 5, Frontrunners. Mobile Task Force Delta-5 is comprised of multiple autonomous deep cover cells specializing in the identification and preemptive acquisition of anomalous objects and entities of interest to other Peanut. groups of interest. I was going to say, I thought I remember hearing MTF the name. MTF Epsilon-6, Village Idiots. MTF Epsilon-6 specializes in the investigation, containment, and subsequent cleanup of gotcha. anomalies in rural and suburban environments. MTF Epsilon-9, Fire Eaters. MTF Epsilon 9 specializes in the use of incendiary weapons and operations in high temperature environments. MTF Epsilon 11, Nine Tailed Fox. Mobile mm. Task Force Epsilon 11 handles internal security for the SCP ah. Foundation under oversight by MTF Alpha 1. They are a special ops force deployed to Foundation sites when standard protocols fail and multiple breaches are imminent. As such, most of their operations are classified. You know, that is something that I had been wondering about and I hadn't really like talked about before, but I just kind of thought about it like off stream when I was thinking about some SCP stories is like, 
who watches the watchers kind of a situation in the scp universe because you know that there's got to be people in the scp foundation who are tempted to use and take these anomalies for their own gains or to do things you know uh that would be i guess quote unquote against the rules and stuff like that it would be a very interesting kind of story if someone could could do uh, a story in the scp universe kind of like almost if there was like a hydra-esque faction you know from like captain america how in winter soldier hydra really kind of inter infiltrated and and took over shield it would almost kind of be interesting if something like that were to happen in the scp universe where the scp foundation one or several of their sites had kind of been infiltrated and sub subvertly taking o taken over by you know some of these other factions maybe the chaos insurgency or or something like that um to well you know for whatever their goal is to take over some of these uh, scps to use for their own means for whatever reason that would be an interesting story be one that i would like to get that uh, to listen to and read you know i'm not much of a, a writer myself i have i come up with some pretty good ideas for things but uh i've never really been a writer or been able to like really flesh stuff like that out but um this one i remember from the games the fear of being made a d class i'd also uh, get a term for research security staff on step out of line true mtf is eight and nine mole rats Mobile yeah we've heard of the mole rats i've heard of the mole rats several times um trying to see Old roots, photo experimental log, lockdown, and lessons for old dogs. Last good man. I think wasn't uh, the mole rats, weren't they used um, in the architect one? That's one of them. But weren't they also used in site 13? I think those are the two that I remember them from. I think one, of, at least one of the mole rat teams or one of the guys from the mole rats was the guy who got stuck in the architect cube trying to search around and see what happened. And then he got lost and died in there. But I think they also originally used them in Site 13 for the initial investigation, something like that. Uh, they went into the architect. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. That's what I remember them from. Yeah. A classified. MTF is eight and nine. Mole rats. Mobile Task Force Zeta Nine specializes in the investigation, exploration, and containment of underground or enclosed areas exhibiting anomalous phenomena particularly those with inconsistent topography or unstable space-time. So you would think they would have been sent, you know, the um, the one we just watched the other day with Keller about O'Death. You would think they would have been sent in that one, right? That sounds like that'd be something that would be up there, Ali. MTF 8 to 10. See no evil. Mobile Task Force 8 to 10 specializes in the investigation, acquisition, and initial containment of objects or Ogno hazards, okay. visual cognito hazards. So would these guys be the ones that are kind of uh, watching over Cthulhu, I would guess? Maybe anything to do with like some pattern screamers or something like that? Because I guess potentially pattern screamers could be confused with cognito hazard at times, right? Or am I mistaken on that? Hazards, visual mimetic agents, or otherwise require indirect or alternate observation in order to safely handle. MTF ATA 11 Savage Beasts Mobile Task Force ATA 11 specializes in the investigation, acquisition, and containment of auditory and musical anomalies, including any auditory cognito hazards or sound based anomalous threats. You don't recognize the bodies. MTF Theta 4 Gardeners Mobile Task Force Theta 4 specializes in the acquisition and containment of plant or plant like anomalous objects and entities especially fieldwork involving widespread infestations of such anomalies. There's a lot of task force that specializes in a lot of different things. That's kind of crazy. There's so many. MTF Theta 90, Angle Grinders. Mobile Task Force Theta 90 deals with anomalous topologies, geometries, and similar mathematical problem areas. MTF IOTA 10, Damn Feds. Mobile Task Force IOTA-10 maintains undercover operatives in various international, federal, and provisional law enforcement agencies and specializes in facilitating the transfer of anomalous evidence and objects into Foundation control, as well as the transfer of jurisdiction over anomalous event locations from local law enforcement to Foundation containment and response teams. MTF Kappa-10, 
Skynet. Oh lord. Mobile Task Force Skynet's Kappa real. 10 is a temporary designation until such time it is either officially dissolved or sanctioned. It is strictly tasked in investigating and engaging cyber anomalies using a combination of virtual agents and foundation researchers to track, neutralize, and or contain such intangible threats. MTF Lambda 4 – Bird Watchers Mobile Task Force Lambda 4 specializes in the investigation, tracking and containment of airborne biological anomalies, gotcha. especially anomalous avian organisms. I don't think we've heard any stories about anything MTF like that MTF Lambda 5 – White Rabbits Mobile Virtual Task Force agents. Lambda 5 specializes in traversing unstable... They're the ones that are uh, sitting there playing World of Warcraft with Cthulhu. That, that's really what their job is at the moment. ...surreal and controlled reality, and containing potentially dangerous persons and artifacts capable of manipulating space and time. Brother symbol is a bunny that turns into a xenomorph. That's kind of creepy. MTF Lambda 12. Pest Control. MTF Lambda 12 specializes in tracking, containing, and exterminating anomalous vermin, often used as a first response team when tracking anomalous organisms. To this day, MTF Lambda oh. 12 have never lost an agent on any of their missions. Well, they're kind of badasses, huh? MTF Lambda 14, one-star reviewers. MTF Lambda 14 is a <laughs> task force that specializes in- They're, These are the guys, they, they, anyone that gives a one-star review on anything on Amazon, they get sent out to deal with them. That's what it is. This is Bezos' personal hit squad. Dealing with retail-orientated locations and anomalies, be they singular restaurants or entire shopping districts displaying anomalies. Since their initial investigation of the Ambrose restaurant, MTF Lambda 14 has been assigned to work to combat this group. MTF MU3 – Highest Bidders Mobile Task Force MU3 is dedicated okay. to monitoring Group of Interest Marshall, Carter and Dark Limited. Through the combined efforts of undercover gotcha. agents and covert ops specialists, their objective is identifying objects of interest in possession of Marshall, Carter and Dark, isolating opportunities to recover these objects and ultimately achieving their containment. There's a lot of task force, MTF man. MU4 – Debuggers Mobile Task Force MU4 specializes in the identification, tracking, retrieval, and containment of electronic devices and transmissions, especially anomalous computers and network-related anomalies. This includes the investigation of internet sites suspected of anomalous capabilities or involved in anomalous events. MTF MU13 – Ghostbusters Mobile Task Force MU13 specializes in the tracking, analysis, and containment Who are you gonna of call? incorporeal or intangible manifestations and entities, particularly those believed to be sentient, sapient, or otherwise intelligent and adaptive. MTF NU7. For how crazy would it be if they somehow like formed the 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 Ghostbusters movies like one and two into the SCP lore, and so like you know. Ray and Vakeman and Egon, you know, they they were all like the original founders of that unit and like they're still there advising them, you know. Hammer down. Mobile Task Force NU7 is a battalion strength force consisting of three company-sized oh, yeah. elements of special operations infantry okay. forces. A light armored vehicle company. This is more of like a military squadron. Helicopter squadron. Chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear platoon. Damn. Combat engineer platoon. Nuclear Weapon Specialist Squad, plus additional combat specialists and support personnel. Mobile Task Force NU7 is based primarily out of Armed Biocontainment Area 14 and is tasked with responding to incidents involving loss of communication with major Foundation facilities. That makes sense. That makes sense that they would have some kind of like actual military branch to like investigate and potentially retake facilities that like if there's an actual facility wide containment breach or loss or under attack that they would have a task force specialized in counterattack and retaking, you know, and investigating what happened. That makes sense. Under circumstances wherein a site wide breach, enemy compromise or other similarly catastrophic event is suspected. Right. MTF Omicron Row, the dream team. The Foundation has discovered the method of becoming honorary, 
and now with this power are more capable of containing them. For decades, they teach their agents the technique that allows one consciousness to join another's. The few mentally hardened individuals that succeed are organized into a task force. What the fuck? The first of these was Mobile Task Force Omicron Row. Uh, like, they've literally figured out how to make Archons from the Protoss and StarCraft 2, brother? And they've got a task force for those guys? Okay. MTF Pi-1, City Slickers. Mobile Task Force Pi-1 specializes in the investigation- So, they've got Billy Crystal in, in here. Billy Crystal's like the head of this. ...containment and subsequent cleanup of anomalies in densely populated urban environments particularly in the New York metropolitan area. MTF Row 1, The Professors. Mobile Task Force Row 1 specializes in the acquisition, containment, and transport of anomalies related to group of interest Alpha 388s. With the reduction of the threat posed by the specific group of interest, the MTF has expanded its focus to any and all containment for anomalous academic endeavors. There's so many task force. Holy shit, man. I mean, I guess it makes sense dealing, you know, considering how many different types of anomalies there are and how many how widespread things could be and how many different things they have to contain. It makes sense that they would have all these different task force that specialize in all these specific things and different anomalies. Um... And it really actually just gives you kind of more of an idea of the scale of the SCP Foundation. You know what I mean? Hearing all these task force. I don't think I've ever heard of the University Faction. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't heard of like 90% of these factions so far. I've really only heard about the Mole ones, the Tau one, I think Omega-7, uh, if I'm remembering that all right, and maybe one more, like Delta something or other. But yeah, most of the, the majorities I've never heard of before. MTF Row 9, Technical Support. Oh, these Mobile are the IT Task guys. Row 9 handles computer security for the These family. are the guys, you know, when you're not, when, you're, when your printer isn't working all right, you, they tell you to turn it off and on again. Okay. I could work for these guys. I used to work in IT. I, I could do this. Technical Support. Mobile Task Force Row 9 handles computer security for the Foundation. When memetic kill agents can lurk throughout the data structure, this is no simple task. Just turn it off and on again. Cytherians. Mobile Task Force Row 19 has been sent to Venus in the hopes to establish a Foundation presence where there may be considerable anomalous activity. Nice. MTF Sigma 3. Bibliographers. Mobile Task Force Sigma 3 is charged with exploring, understanding, and eventually containing the vast otherworldly location of the Wanderer's Library. Yeah, I don't know anything about that yet. MTF Sigma-66, 16 tons. Mobile Task Force Sigma-66 is formed of captured members from other groups of interest. Interesting. Despite the lack of loyalty the Foundation expects from the assembled team, they find the members' expertise of value. MTF so kind of like five, defectors. Samsara. About five. Immortal cyborg clones created from the flesh of a dead god. Tau-5 utilizes esoteric and experimental Foundation weaponry to investigate and contain thermaturgic, magical, and psionic threats. So these guys are the Mechanicus of the SCB Foundation. Interesting. MTF PSI-7, Home Improvement. Oh, they got Tim the Toolman Taylor here, dude. Specializes in the undercover in they got Tim the Toolman Taylor and they got Al Borlin as part of the SCB Foundation. That's sick. Ow, ow, ow. Investigation, containment, and or demolition of anomalous buildings or buildings affected by anomalies, particularly residential homes in populated areas. This includes the acquisition or transfer <laughs> of affected buildings to Foundation control, as well as initial observation and documentation of such buildings prior to transfer to local containment teams for long-term or ongoing containment. MTF PSI-8, oh, it's up fucking the yawning. Mobile Task Force PSI-8 specializes in the investigation, tracking, containment, and or destruction of individuals suspected to be capable of or having been affected by reanimation anomalies, ah. as well as investigating suspected cases of communication with deceased individuals. I would assume these guys would be the ones that would be like looking over the doctor and what's going on with him, huh? If something, or 
if the doctor were ever to get out, these guys would be the ones that would track him down and either put him down some way or recapture him. This includes the severing of devices intended to allow communications with individuals buried alive, such as bells, pipes and phones, Yikes. as well as detainment and interrogation of individuals claiming to have had contact with deceased individuals. MTF Omega Zero The saints of MTF Omega Zero are informational constructs with the memories of deceased Foundation personnel yeah. able to manifest through access of the Foundation's intranet terminals. Using identity warfare training, they protect their living comrades against informational threats and entities. The existence of MTF Omega Zero is unknown to most or all of the living members of the Foundation. MTF Omega 7, Pandora's Box. Mobile Task Force Omega 7 has been. I think I remember hearing about this one too. I think I remember hearing about Omega 7. Whole task to is an experiment has for specializing in action and containment anomalies, usually in profit anomalies, human identity, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I could have swore. I know I've heard. I know I've heard Omega 7 before. Incident log, personal law, incident zero. Maybe it was incident zero. Incident zero sounds familiar. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, though. Anyway, let's continue. And disbanded and decommissioned. This entry is to be deleted by order of the Records and Informational Security Administration. Previously, Mobile Task Force Omega-7 was an experimental task force specializing in the acquisition and containment of anomalies utilizing cooperative anomalous humanoid entities. Isn't 076 the, the rogue AI? Or an AI? I can't remember what 0, uh, 0105 was. From Abel's video? Okay. Oh, 76 is Abel. Okay. That's what it was. 76 is Abel. And 74, I think, was Kane. I don't remember what 105 was, but I, I'm pretty sure I've heard of 105 before. Particularly <clears throat> SCP 076 and SCP 105. MTF Omega 12, Achilles Heel. A task force composed of reality bending SCP personnel from an alternate universe. Omega 12 is tasked with capturing SCP 3480 2 instances guarding the many entities imprisoned in Area 13 and hunting down powerful uncontained reality benders elsewhere. MTF Stigma 9 evolved from naturally occurring gears, I think I've heard of this one too, and pulleys. Historically, the Church of the Broken God has always prided itself on its artificiality, that its faith is proven with tangible artifacts and physical devices of miracles. So when the time came to destabilize the church, the Foundation put forth a team of forgers, and Stigma 9 was it. Additional MTFs MTF Epsilon 7, Forget-Me-Nots Undercover task force tasked with disrupting the research and development of amnestic drugs. MTF 8 of 4, Be Gone Forth. A unit of SCP 3095 1, consisting of pelicans and seagulls, charged with protecting normalcy after the BE class migration end of consciousness scenario. Oh, fuck. MTF Eta 5, Jaeger Bombers. Mobile Task Force ETA-5 is a rapid response unit specializing in the tracking, capturing and containment of large-scale aggressors, mm. entities over 30 meters in height, deploys from and detains large-scale aggressors within dimensional site 172. MTF ETA-5, the bigger boat, specialized in anomalies involving or threatening marine vehicles. Mobile Task Force Upsilon-4, Sugar Pill. Originally formed in order to contain SCP-2559, Mobile Task Force Upsilon-4 is tasked with epidemiological containment, especially with the containment of memetic outbreaks. MTF PHI-2, Clever Girls. Task Force specialized in study, tracking, capture, and hunting of prehistoric anomalies, especially dinosaurs. Oh shit, we got a dinosaur? I, I, I get it. I get it. Clever Girls. Jurassic Park, I get it. I understand this reference. And that concludes the MTF team. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Next time will be the infamous SCP-2399, a malfunctioning destroyer. This one is going to take me a little while, but as you know by now, longer videos are worth the wait. 
Yeah. Please be sure to follow all the social media outlets for video updates. And if you can't wait that long and want even more exclusive content, then consider joining the Patreon for Discord access, early video access, exclusive sketches, seal the sketches early, request your own sketches, audio collaboration opportunities, and a lot more. And thank you to Smoke, Smug De Jure, Nathan Fab, Exalted Galaxy, Dr. Crystal Spice, Dragon. Okay, he's got a lot of guys that think we're going to be here for a minute if we do all this. But anyway, so there you go. That was um, the Explain the SP Mobile Task Force by Mr. Illustrated. Honestly, there's a lot more task force than I thought there would be. And, and it really kind of gives me a better idea and scale of what the SCP Foundation is. Like when I think about the SCP Foundation, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily think about it as like on such a grand scale. Like obviously just because of the idea of how secretive I guess they have to be and because it's like a privately funded organization like it doesn't seem like they would have as much personnel as they do necessarily and they have to rely i guess more on outside sources to help them in certain ways but this video definitely gave me an idea of like yeah it's a lot bigger than i thought it was and they have a, a, a they have a lot more preparedness uh for various scenarios and scps and hazards than uh i initially thought and a lot of the stuff is also scps that i haven't gotten into yet like the whole thing with with venus i'd heard about that before but i haven't really gotten into that yet but there's like a whole other civilization on venus and there's all kinds of anomalous stuff that could be going on there um yeah so uh and we haven't even gotten into a lot of uh, you know undersea um scps and stuff so there, there's still a whole plethora of things that i still need to get into so uh yeah there's a lot more obscure ones too i'm sure so but uh yeah very interesting very interesting good video going over the various scp um task force their purpose uh i liked seeing um the uh scps that these task force are involved in in some way so if you wanted to like if you hear um that task force or whatever you could always kind of use this video as a reference to what that task force specializes in and what scp they were involved in capturing containing or killing etc etc so interesting interesting great video like i said earlier as always links down below in the description to the original video here without my commentary and reaction and to mr illustrated's channel please do me the favor of clicking on those links uh if you enjoyed this original video of his give his video a like uh check out his channel if you enjoy his content he makes a lot of it for the sp universe uh you know give him a sub the man deserves a lot of love makes a lot of great content works hard at it so please do me that favor um we're doing this reaction live for youtube members if you would like to come in and hang out uh during these reactions and join our discussions we'd love to have you guys here uh there's a join button down there you can click that and uh as well as being able to come in here during the live reactions uh you can also get early access to youtube videos have your name put on the end of videos etc etc so take a look at the youtube membership benefit tiers that i offer see if any of them have any interest to you uh, and if you'd like to take your support to the next level would greatly appreciate it regardless i just appreciate you guys coming and hanging out checking out the video thank you very much for taking out the time uh from your busy day to do so hope you enjoyed it if you did consider leaving a like and a sub as it helps me and helps the channel grow and i uh, hope you're having yourself a great day whenever you're watching this. so thank you very much hope you're having a good one